guys, I'm Luna, and today on Adult Bedtime Stories, we are reading Cat Talk. Essentially, how to talk to your cat, alright? It says, Cat Talk, it's by Carol C. Wilborn, who is a cat therapist. And it says, Cat Talk, what your cat is trying to tell you. So... I'm going to put this in the adult bedtime category, but this is probably going to be more like a something you would watch, like an informational. Basically, the reason we're reading this is because my cat, Alice, who you guys have met occasionally on my channel, my little orange mancoon, she's not around at the moment, but uh, one day she was purring, all right, and I was just sitting there petting her. And she started kind of, like, batting me with her paw. Like, not with her claws out, but kind of just, like, playfully, like, kind of, like, batting me. Like, like she wanted me to know something, or she wanted to show me something. And I was like, like, I don't know what you're saying. And I was like, wait a minute. And I remembered that I owned this book, and I'd never read it. So, we are going to read this together because I feel like there will be... An actually surprising amount of people who want to learn to talk to their cats. So we're going to skip the intro, which is explaining what a cat therapist is. You guys can let me know in the comments if you want me to go over that, if you're interested in that. But we're going to skip right to the first chapter. What is my cat trying to tell me? And we're probably going to also read the second chapter, just because these chapters are so short. And that one is called Anticipation. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, right? If you have not yet already, please hit that subscribe button. Stick around if you like what we're doing here. Ring that notification bell so that you never miss a video. And hit that thumbs up button, because it is a free way that you can help your girl out. Oh, and by the way, if you guys have paranormal stories, send them to me at this email right there, luna.enchanted at yahoo.com, because I want to start doing paranormal story time, and I know that I am not the first YouTuber to do this, but the reason that our paranormal story time will be special is because I don't have that big of a following yet, and... Since it is the beginning, you guys have a very, very, very good chance, like 100, of seeing your paranormal stories featured. So make sure to do that if you have your own paranormal stories. All right, let's get started. Let's see what your cat is trying to tell you. What is my cat trying to tell me? Sam, please be quiet. I can't stop to pet you now. I've got to get these cookies into the oven. I cried. It was a trying morning, and I had to get the cookies baked and all kinds of sun dries finished before I left for the practice. Sam was annoyed because I had jumped out of bed before he got all of his morning cuddling. He's 15 years old, and being Siamese tends to make him score high on the vocal cords. Piercing, to be quite frank. Baggins, our other cat, and Sam's adopted kitten, is eight years old. He was curled up in one of their baskets. Okay, so you can already see that the cats are named after the Lord of the Rings characters. Bilbo, Baggins, and Sam. Okay. I knew Sam would not be enticed to join Baggins until I had picked him up and hugged him, so I did. But when I put him down, he started vocalizing all over again. This was my cue to stretch out on the sofa so he could climb up and stretch out on me. So I did, and he did, and soon Baggins joined him. It looked like I wasn't going to get my sun dries done, but I'd made Sam and Baggins happy. Sam's tactics had been a bit more dramatic in his youth. If he didn't get my attention by simply talking, he would give me a nip on the hand or ankle, whichever part of my body was most available. For a while, I thought he was just ornery, but I soon discovered that if I petted and talked to him, he would relax and start purring. Other times, Sam didn't want to be petted, but just to sit in my lap and be admired. 
If I tried to pet him, his tail would swish back and forth, and if I persisted, he would give me a silencing nip. Yes, he wanted contact, but it became clear to me that he preferred to control the situation, as most cats do, from my experience anyway. Sam taught me that when his tail started swishing, this meant hands off. He didn't discriminate and treated our friends and visitors the same way. To avoid any hard feelings, we just told anyone whose lap Sam graced what his terms were. Sam and I have been together 15 years now. Sometimes he has communicated his needs to me by actually talking. Other times, by the way he moves his body. And if necessary, by doing something bizarre to attract my attention to whatever it is he needs. A cat is a very sensitive animal. How he feels is how he acts. It is therefore very important to know how your cat is feeling. Since a cat doesn't intellectualize his feelings as people do, his feelings surface much faster. Some cats, like Sam, are very vocal, and although you can't always figure out what they want, you are aware that they do want something. There are other cats who express their feelings primarily through body language, such as a wag of the tail or the ripple of a back. If you are able to decipher your cat's feelings by how he expresses them with his body, you will be in closer touch with what your cat is feeling. Often your cat can clue you in on upcoming events through body language. For example, your cat's keen senses can alert you to approaching visitors, which usually happens when I'm in the bathtub or shower. If Sam comes sauntering into the bathroom with an annoyed look on his face, I know that someone is at the door. On the other hand, Baggins' reaction to such events is usually more hysterical than annoyed. Instead of sauntering into the bathroom, he employs the run for cover tactic. The sound of the doorbell causes him to seek cover under the bed or in the closet. Other times, you may notice that your cat will run to the door or stand with his ears cocked. It's because he hears someone in the hall. Often it's someone you expect, but he got the message before you. This may give you an extra moment to dab on some perfume or wipe the cat hairs off your clothes and make any last minute touches. Baggins will run to the door if it's my husband, Paul, he hears, but for almost anyone else, he will cock his ears, peer intently toward the door, and then run for cover. Not Sam. He remains right where he is unless it's Paul and he wants to spend the energy to greet him at the door. If you're under the hairdryer or plugged into earphones and your cat jumps suddenly out of a sound sleep off the chair next to the phone with a disgruntled look, you can be sure the phone is ringing. He might even flick his tail or whiskers or ripple his back to indicate that he's annoyed and wants you to do something to stop the noise. My cat does that in the morning when I snooze the alarm clock too much. She don't like that. Not only does your cat use body language to express things he's feeling about himself or to convey messages to you, he uses it to clue you in on, a, on another cat's or animal's behavior. If, for instance, you find one of your cats intently sitting in front of a closed cabinet or closet and you can't find your other cat, open the cabinet or closet and your missing cat will appear. If the missing cat is sleeping, however, he'll probably remain right where he is and your other cat will join him or try to take over his spot. One afternoon, I returned home from the practice and Baggins, as usual, followed me to the kitchen. Suddenly, I heard a far off cry and started toward the living room. I had only taken a few steps when Baggins darted toward the apartment door and started to scream. I opened the door and Sam stepped inside. Without my knowledge, Sam had stepped out when I stepped in. On hearing Sam's cry of distress, Baggins had immediately run to his rescue. Now and again, a cat will help to save his companion's life. Parker Pine, a client's cat, awakened her person one night by screaming and pawing away at her ear. There was no way he would let her sleep. When she noticed that her younger cat wasn't on the bed as usual, she called out to her but got no response. The woman stumbled into the living room and noticed that the half screen was pushed aside from the window. Her younger cat, Putney, was sitting out on the window ledge. Fortunately, this woman convinced the cat to come inside without incident. She might not have survived a 10-floor drop. If suddenly you find one cat constantly picking on the other without obvious provocation, there's a possibility that the victimized one is reaching sexual maturity or is sick. Your healthy cat is annoyed and anxious because he can sense that there's something wrong with his companion. His way of protecting himself is to lash out at the source of his anxiety, your other cat. There's a picture there of a cat trying to get into a cabinet. 
Lovely. I love it when we read books that have pictures. I don't know why, I just do. I guess it gives me more to show you guys. Clarence was a mature, older cat who lived with his people and companion cats. Although his relationship with the spayed female Toffee was never ideal, his people became alarmed when Toffee started to victimize Clarence. As I reviewed Clarence's case history, which included chronic cystitis, and observed his facial expression and breathing, I recommended that his chest be x-rayed. X-rays revealed that he had a minor cardiac problem. I explained to his people that Toffee had sensed Clarence's discomfort and victimized him because he made her anxious. Clarence started taking medication. As he felt better, Toffee became more relaxed and stopped her hostile behavior. Luckily, his people were able to take care of Clarence's problem before Toffee's behavior became habitual. If that had occurred, the reconciliation would have taken longer. By properly interrupting your cat's message, you may be able to discover your sick cat's problem before it becomes serious. Sometimes a cat can sense and react to a medical problem in his companion long before the problem manifests itself clinically. Butchby and Ebony were mature neutered cats that had a compatible relationship. Therefore, their person was totally confused when Ebony began to hiss at and reject Buckney. I recommended that we examine Ebony to make sure she wasn't experiencing any medical problems. When Ebony checked out all right, I suggested that we examine Buckney. He was slightly asthmatic, but otherwise okay. Buckney started taking some medication, and I advised their person to give both cats extra attention and support. Several weeks later, Buckney's appetite declined, and he appeared uncomfortable. Diagnostic tests revealed that he had diabetes. Unfortunately, Buckney's condition became critical, and he had to be put down. Ebony had sensed Buckney's problem long before it evidenced any clinical signs. The more you become aware of what your cat is saying to you, the better your relationship will be. Sam and Baggins are forever making this plain to me. Aww. Well, that's pretty cool to know that when you have two cats, you know, one cat is able to sense medical problems in the other cat, like before you would know. So we're going to read chapter two, Anticipation, because it's so short. Yeah, we will. Anticipation. Cats are creatures of habit. Their anticipation of routine activities increases their security and happiness. One of the high points of Sam's day is bedtime. Here's why. Paul usually makes it to bed before I do. As soon as Sam realizes that Paul is heading toward the bedroom, he perches himself on the bedside chest. No sooner does Paul climb into bed and stretch out his legs than Sam immediately arranges himself on top of Paul's pillow. He proceeds to let out a short cry and nuzzle the spread with his head. If Paul tries to ignore him, he starts pawing away. This convinces Paul to lift up the spread so that Sam may crawl underneath. Sam doesn't remain there, but very quickly emerges to settle down on Paul's leg. It's almost as if he carries out his ritual to firmly establish that he may sleep wherever he pleases. Paul's legs are his starting point. If Paul isn't too engrossed in his bedtime reading, Sam has very little trouble attracting Paul's attention to get what he wants. He's taught Paul to anticipate his actions. Cats teach us to anticipate their actions. They also express anticipation. Because their anticipation changes, from one situation to another, they express it in different ways. There's eager anticipation, which occurs when a cat waits impatiently for something, but he's annoyed when it takes too long. At bedtime, Sam gives a classic example of this. If the phone should dare to ring while he's reclining on Paul's legs, he flicks his tail back and forth as hard as he can to convey that he wants the talking to stop and the light turned off so he can get some sleep. Baggins' first love is food. On any trip to the kitchen, within three hours of his next meal, he darts to his dish, ripples his body, scrunches up his face, and screams while he impatiently but eagerly anticipates his dinner. Whereas Baggins needs no formal dining invitation, Sam often has to be called. Even then, it's not unlike him to start and then stop while he waits to be petted, another kind of anticipation. Sam feels more secure and comfortable if he's being touched while he eats. Baggins is almost as concerned about his litter box as he is about his meals. Heaven forbid the litter box should contain the slightest debris when he is ready to use it, and we're around to change it. 
If so, he'll wait for one of us to enter the bathroom, he'll flick his tail and pace around the box, or perch himself on the toilet seat and stare at the box until we carry out his wishes. Sometimes, he'll even run back and forth to the bathroom, trying to attract our attention. If we don't get his message or innocently leave the bathroom without cleaning the box, he'll get even by leaving a pile on the floor. However annoyed I may become, I have to remind myself that Baggins tried to get me to anticipate his need so it wasn't his fault. Another one of Baggins' pleasures involves the bathtub. When I take a bath, he first props his front paws over the edge of the tub and stares intently at me as the tub fills. Shortly after, he paces back and forth across the bathtub tile. If I try to ignore him, he walks along the edge of the bathtub. It's when he meows at me that I finally reach over and pull out the stopper. As the water drains out of the tub, I drape a bath towel around my body so Baggins knows his time is near. As the last drops of water leave the tub, Baggins jumps onto the towel and stretches himself out. From eager and patient anticipation, he moves to intense joy at attaining what he wanted to occupy my bath towel. Gable was one of our resident cats at the practice who was another water freak. His anticipation concerned drinking. He preferred his water straight out of the tap. To get our attention, he would jump up next to the sink and gaze intently at the faucet until we turned it on. Another kind of anticipation is dread anticipation, which is when your cat knows what is going to happen next and doesn't like it. Baggins clearly illustrates this state whenever he sees our suitcase come out of the closet. All of a sudden, there's a big lump under the bedspread because he knows this means he and Sam are going with us. He wants to be with us, but he prefers that we all stay home. To lure Baggins out from under the covers, we usually put his canvas traveling bag by the bed with Sam already inside, and when we lift the spread, Baggins will usually jump right into the bag. Sam and bags are his main security blankets. If your cat's body ripples and or his tail flicks and he runs for cover at the sight of the nail clipper, he is sending you another message of dread anticipation. Try to have someone else distract him by petting or giving him catnip while you trim. If this fails, you may have to resort to trimming his nails during his lazy or nap period. It's not unusual for a long-haired cat to scoot to the top of his floor to ceiling scratch post when his person takes out his grooming combs. An especially vivid sign of dread anticipation is the tip of a plum tail sticking out from under the sofa when a cat is trying to hide from his person who's trying to wipe his soiled rear. Unlike Sam, who dashes to his bedroom basket, for his morning pills, some cats whose daily medication can't be disguised in their food have trouble adjusting to the ritual. So they, too, run in dread anticipation. Preco is an adult cat who perches himself on the toilet seat to urinate and uses the bathtub drain for his other business. When it's time for Krico's daily medication, he first camps out on the toilet seat for a while. If he finds this action doesn't distract his person, he runs to the bathtub. Although he gets his medication in the end, Krico has found that as long as he seems to be attending to business, his person won't interrupt. Ambulin anticipation occurs when your cat both wants and doesn't want something. When we have visitors at home, Baggins will sometimes sit in the doorway to the living room, watching and occasionally peering at us. He wants to join Sam, who is usually the center of attention, but he's not too sure about the visitors. Any sudden movement or loud noise will cause his body to ripple and he'll retreat to the bedroom until things have calmed down. My friend Phyllis's cat, Barnaby, goes into a state of ambulance when mealtime arrives. While Phyllis prepares the food, Barnaby jumps up on the counter and stays nearby. Then he tries to show he couldn't care less by feverishly batting around the nearest unrelated object. However, by the time his food is in this dish, he's right there chomping away. Oh boy, does he want the food, but somehow he is afraid if he acts too interested, perhaps it will disappear. This behavior is characteristic of a cat who has had an insecure kittenhood. Barnaby came from a pet shop and was the odd-looking kitten of his litter. Phyllis noticed that he didn't interact with the rest of his litter at the pet shop. The other four kittens were cream Persians from a long line of cream Persians. Barnaby was a brown tabby. Since he was unlike all the rest of his mother's kittens, he didn't receive much of her attention. He probably remembers nursing as a traumatic experience. Chances are he never got the nipple he really wanted when he actually wanted it if he showed his interest. Although this may be only as assumption, in fact Barnaby was a very sick kitten, which indicates that his relationship with his mother and litter was not fulfilling. 
Jennings was a former resident cat who had a difficult time accepting affection. Sometimes he would nuzzle up to be petted when then his tail would start flicking as if he were going to spray and he would prance off across the floor. Although he wanted physical contact, the charge of energy he received from being stroked overpowered him. When this happened, he transferred the energy to another part of his body to decrease the overpowering feeling. As Jennings became more relaxed and accustomed to human contact, he was able to enjoy being stroked and cuddled without ambience. His major breakthrough came when he moved in with a cat named Rose and gained his own cat and person to love. Anticipation is a natural expression for cats. It's important for us to be able to decipher their different kinds of anticipation so we can understand their needs. Once we understand what it is they anticipate, we can either go along with their wishes or distract them with something else. Thus, we can decrease their anxiety level, which, if ignored, can trigger various problems and disorders. So there was also a picture of a cat hiding under a bed. And that is the end of chapter one and two. So the next chapter is chapter three, happiness. I'm not going to continue on with that today, but let me know if you are enjoying learning how to talk to your cat or how to read their body language rather and their mewing. Again, if you have not already hit that subscribe button, please do so, as well as hit that thumbs up button. It is a free way to help your girl out. And comment below which book on adult bedtime stories is your favorite. Also, don't forget, guys, to send me your paranormal stories to luna.enchanted at yahoo.com. Thank you so much, guys.